Do you eat the green ends? How do you keep motivated to do the hard stuff with training? This legit could be a body. Well, let's open the box whilst simultaneously showing everybody your address, Leon. So all the weirdos can knock on my door and go, Leon, gonna take a photo with you, please. Gonna smell your socks. Or something like that. You may not know what this system is, but I will show you. I was born in it. I have the uh, <laughs> wrong thing to do. Got the finger pulse oximeter. Got a secondary mask. Hygiene. Yeah. <sighs> that is heavy. Overwhelming temptation to just pull this off. Oh, if it was mine. If it was mine. Sorry, Bruce. You're gonna have to move. Get comfy. You're not going anywhere. Now is an important time to say, read the instructions. I don't know how all of that goes on that and makes it work, but thankfully, the guy sent me an email. You are on. This connects to this. That goes on there. For all you ASMR lovers. <laughs> that looks like that goes in like that. Wow, I just put that on for about three or four minutes while I fiddled with the handles and knobs to find and adjust the altitude, because you can adjust the altitude, which essentially takes more oxygen out of the air or each breath that you're breathing. And it goes all the way up to 3,700 or 800 meters, I believe. I put it on the highest setting to make sure that the concentration level of oxygen, which was on the fingertip, which was being measured, was definitely going down. That's brutal. and. That's the reason, <laughs> obviously I'm gonna be going around that sort of height, but I need to get my body as used to as I possibly can, having less oxygen in the system to avoid headaches, over fatigue, essentially generally having to work a damn sight harder when I'm in Mexico. My coach is now in contact with the guys over at the Altitude Center to get the best way to implement this machine because essentially it's not just a case of every single run getting it on or anything like that. It's gonna be times whereby I might have to build up my tolerance, spend time literally when I'm just programming wearing the mask or when I'm gonna be doing the runs. Do you go in and do all the runs with it or just some of the runs, that kind of stuff. So to Mexico prep, let's get it done. <laughs> And if you have any questions about the Altitude Center specifically, the test that I did, you can check that video out where I went and did my lactate threshold testing with those guys at Altitude to get all of my readings to be able to implement this piece of equipment more effectively. If you wanna know more about it, literally just drop me a question below or head over to the Altitude Center. They'll have all the details and all the ways you can implement these machines. It's not just for ultra running. They've got crossfitters, they've got boxers, they've got obviously mountain climbers and mountaineers out there, but these pieces of kit can be phenomenal for any physical challenge that you've got coming up, or if you just wanna get a damn sight fitter, and you've got a lot less time and you wanna work a little bit harder in a short period of time. That's another way that you can implement them. Oh, cheers guys. So now, questions from the public. If you know whose podcast I've stolen that from, don't tell them, but it's a great podcast. Let me know below. Right, so yesterday before I started filming the vlog, I put up a QA and a bar on the Instagram, the Lean Machine's official, bop, 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 go and follow it, asking for the questions that you would like answered in this vlog. Some of them have got absolutely f all to do with anything to do with this vlog, so they've been scrapped. But there are a few that were great, so thank you very much. I'm gonna start with this one right now. I'm gonna plow through a couple of them throughout the vlog. Break it up a little bit, because otherwise you get really bored and switch off and watch something else. I know who you are. First question, TJ in 24. How do you deal with recovery to be able to run day after day? I'm asked this all the time. <laughs> I'm an influencer now. Uh, I get asked this question all the time. Probably been asked twice, but I'm gonna make a video on it. You know the way. Um, so when I talk about recovery for running, we have to look at the running itself and the recovery element specifically, because those two entities add together as one thing. And I know that sounds really convoluted, but essentially, when you hear the word recovery, people think about the stuff that you do outside of your running. But part of the key process of being able to run day after day after day is actually lying within the programming. So first of all, get the right program. Get an effective program. If you're looking for a running program, you can email me, tlmonlinecoaching at gmail.com. 
just say, Leon, hook me up. I want to be coached by you because you're an absolute legend. The, the more you coax me, the more you, 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 you fill my ego, the more likely I am to take you on because at the moment I'm completely full. But still, try it anyway. It's pretty much going to follow the underlying rule that we use in running is the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time or 80% of your, your total time that you're running, you're going to be running at what we call easy. Zone two, low and slow. Or in the recovery world of training, so say for instance you've got crazy leg doms and you want your legs to recover effectively, the restorative zone of training, right? So zone two is that phase where we're gonna build that aerobic base. It's gonna help build your endurance, you're gonna be able to manage your heart rate effectively, but you are essentially, in a certain realm, you are kind of recovering. You are not, it's what we call recoverable stress, right? You're placing the body under stress and tension, the heart rate's elevating, yes, but you are not overreaching to that point where you have a prolonged period of time whereby you have to recover. So say for instance, you go into the gym and you do your 10 rep max bench press is 100 kilos. If you go in on a deload week and do 10 reps at 60 kilos, you're still activating those muscles, but you're not tearing or creating those microfiber tears in the muscles, which is gonna cause that delayed onset of muscle soreness or DOMS. It's exactly the same with running. We spend a lot of time building that base, building that baseline fitness and endurance, but we're not stressing the system so much so that maybe our knees or our ankles or our hips or something like that's hurting the next day or our muscles are sore, you know, if your joints are hurting day after day with running, you're probably doing something wrong with your running. So it's all about getting the effective program. I do not run every single day. No matter what program you're doing, what your running goal is or aspirations are, you should always have a rest day at some point during your week. If you're not, if you're running every single day, you're kind of asking for trouble. So that's the training side of things. In terms of the actual recovery outside, I'm gonna take you to meet one of my little friends. Well, you can meet two. First of all, my badass skull foam roller from Wolverson, which is horrifically painful. And then this is my bag of pain, which genuinely goes everywhere I go if I'm staying overnight. So every single night, regardless of whether I've run or not, I will. Take out of this bag, this prickly ball, which I release the TFLs off, I, right up here, lay across them for a couple of minutes each side. Peanut, which I roll the bottom of my feet into my calves and Achilles as well, because it hugs them quite nicely each side. I wear toe separators for around two hours each evening. With Pure Sport Balm, this muscle balm, you know I absolutely love it, and I use a scraping tool. And that's pretty much it. And then the other side of the, the recovery is my sleep routine, which is obviously really important. I take these bad boys, the unwind tablets, and I also use um, Pure Sport CBD, which is the 3,000 milligram drops I have them over under the tongue and a pillow spray which sounds really stupid but honestly it just sends me off so the recovery element first of all is looked after by effective programming and then second of all on the other end of it this is some of my aftercare that I look at every single night because anything that you're doing which is repetitive as what running is things are going to start getting tight things are going to start getting really pissed off hope that helped now I'm going to have to ask you to excuse me for probably a couple of hours. I've got programming to do for the TLM functional plan, which is firing off. If you want to join one of our training plans, we've got a run plan, we've got a functional plan, which is more CrossFit-esque. Um, we've got a bodybuilding or a gym pro training program, and we've got a home program. They're like 14 pound per month for five days of training per week. Absolute bargain. Um, again, literally just head over to our Instagram, you'll be able to find them from there. What up, people? So that is done now. Exciting, I have to book my flights to Mexico. Let's get them booked. Let's see when we're going. Do you wanna come with me? Do you wanna come to Mexico with me? Find out from London Heathrow, 11.05 a.m. on Wednesday the 2nd of November. Give me a couple of days there just to find my bearings. Then I'm flying back. The event finishes on the 12th, I believe. I'm gonna fly back, which is a Saturday. I'm gonna fly back on the Monday, so then on that Sunday I can kind of just vegetate because what me and the wife did last time is we flew back straight away the following day and I was in bits. So I'm gonna give myself 24 hours to just chill. Thousand pound. Let's book it! Flights booked, hotel booked, stand broke. If I can get that back on there. God, it's so crap, these stands. Now, I want to train, I need to lift some weights today. It's one of those things, right? No matter how much of this running that I absolutely love, I still love lifting weights. I like to feel that pump, that muscular activation. 
I just like that feeling of yeah. Otherwise I just feel really limp and soft. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a snicky snacky snoo and then we're gonna get a little bit of a session in. There will be some run focus stuff in there, but generally we're just pumping lad. Pumping. If you wanna eat chicken fam, but you wanna make it a little bit less boring, I'm gonna give you my, my go-to. Chicken, I'm gonna go for about 150, 200 grams. Olive oil, nice glug. Around a ta tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Paprika. As fruity as you like, around a tablespoon of that. Mild chili powder, how much do you dare? I do about a tablespoon. Garlic granules, teaspoon to a tablespoon. Oregano, around a teaspoon of this stuff. Season to taste. Mix her up. You'll know if you've done it right, if the chicken looks a little bit orange, if it goes completely red, you've either gone absolutely mental with the chili, you're hard, or you've put way too much paprika in, all right? While the chicken's doing its thing, I'm also gonna have some whole grain rye bread. Uh, you may not have seen this, it's quite niche. It's bread that you can get from like a Sainsbury's or Tesco's. It's thin, it's fibrous, it's nutty. I prefer it to normal bread. Normal bread kind of gives me that blow, and I end up going back and having another six slices of this stuff. Absolutely love it. So I'll have a slice of that with a little bit of cream cheese on there to go with the chicken. Smash a knocko, get pumped. This stuff is amazing. I'm not vegan, I still love a bit of Philadelphia, but the wife is a little bit more selective nowadays. And she bought this, is it Vio? Vio Life. Vio Life vegan creamy paste. It's a bit like Philadelphia essentially. That is going straight on the rye bread because it tastes bloody good. We have it, no frills, pretty simple, tastes great. And then strawberries. Got a question for you. Your strawberries, do you eat the green ends or do you cut them off? We've been conditioned to cut them off all the time, but they're actually extremely fibrous. They taste a little bit earthy, but very nice. Right, before we do some training, that's just a random pair of socks. I do want to say a massive thank you to the guys over at Nordic Track because they sent me this treadmill. It's basically, the treadmill that I bought originally, but all the bells and whistles, it not only has incline up to 15 degrees, it also has decline, which is going to become, which is going to become super, super important for my Mexico prep. Not only does this still fold as well, being a folding treadmill and being this stable and robust, I'm absolutely blown away. It's got a huge screen. I always use it in manual mode, which is pretty simple. It's all touch screen and all the rest of it. My hands are a little bit greasy, sorry. And everything you need to know of your sessions is on there. It's got more metrics, honestly, more metrics than I could ever imagine. And oh, I'm just extremely thankful. So thank you so much to the guys over at Nordic Track. This was gifted to me. I am going to be sharing it and all the rest of it. I featured their T10, I think it was, which was the original one that I bought. Like I say, this is just a big brother. I will put the link below because again, I'm extremely grateful. Um, so thank you very much, guys. Oh, pre-workout of the gods. <laughs> Let me just pause that before YouTube goes, oh, you can't use that music, mate. Pain in the ass. Anyway, first part of the session is going to be predominantly accessories for my running, so a lot of unilateral stuff, i.e. single leg, slow eccentric loading of the knees, getting the quads working, glutes working, a lot of banded stuff. I'm just gonna overlay it all. This is all the kind of stuff that I'm doing, in, I would say twice a week at the moment. It's all about working on those stabilizers. The small little assisting muscles are the ones that are going to start causing the huge issues in terms of over usage over a long period of time, i.e. endurance running. I could run, I can have the strongest quads in the world, I could have the strongest hamstrings in the world, which I haven't right now, but we focus on all those what I call aesthetic muscles. It's not those aesthetic muscles that are gonna be able to keep us going and keep us from falling into a poor position over and over again while we're running 250K. So glutes, glute meads, TFLs, hamstrings, bicep femoris, super small muscles that need to help. And this is basically what I'm doing at the moment. And also as well, building bulletproof feet is super important as well. Right, training done. Let's do another question. Woo wee! Right, so next question while I have a drink. Actually, really, really chuffed. I have been using these drinkable Omega Freeze for about a year now. Um, obviously with the amount of inflammation from training, 
I was advised to essentially double my omega-3 intake and I was like, I don't wanna keep taking more capsules. EO3, or used to be known as enhanced recovery, 1600 milligrams of omega-3 in a cart and I have these post-run, post-gym session, I probably have, to be honest, I have two a day. Um, tastes amazing, it's got some protein in there as well, a good 20 grams, which is epic. Yeah, and I am super proud, super, super happy because we have just signed with these guys officially as well, which is really, really cool when you've been using a product for so long and they're like, you know what guys, let's, let's work together and have happy days. So just to recap, the question was, by KV Anar Ancor72, I recognize your um, avatar. Thank you very much for your question. As always, you engage with everything that we do on Instagram, and I really appreciate that. Same to everyone else. How do you keep motivated to do the hard stuff with training? When I talk about, talk about um, my process and motivation and everything like that quite, quite often, to be honest, because as flattering as it is, actually, I do get asked quite a lot about this infamous word, motivation. And let's just get a little bit deep for a second. When people talk about motiva motivation, they're trying to cultivate motivation. Remember when you first decide to do something training wise, whether it be lose a couple of pounds, build a bit of muscle, get ready for a holiday, or do something like a five stage ultra marathon like I'm doing right now. The motivation is brimming at that initial sign up or start phase. You're like, oh my God, I'm doing it. I've started, happy days, you've taken that step. The amount of motivation and energy and positivity that comes from that is quite huge. But what I so often see with people is they try to harvest that motivation every single time they go into a session. So I always say the end goal, what you want to achieve or what you want to get to is what people pull their motivation from, right? And that's what they start to keep looking for. So when you get into the gym, say for instance for me, I'm like, oh yeah, Mexico 250, Mexico 250, amazing. Every single time if I try to get onto the treadmill and pull energy into that session from thinking about Mexico, which is in three months time, after a period of time that gets a little bit boring because that doesn't really get any closer. So what I say to people is first of all, don't rely on the motivation or the energy that you first initially felt from the end goal that you want to achieve. I know it feels like you can just because that's, you know, when that first starts, you've got all this energy. I always say, try and put as much as you can, this is harder, hard, you know, easier said than done. Try and put the amount of energy and motivation that you would into what you would think that you would feel for that end goal into every single session, right? So I always talk about being process driven. And by that I mean, for instance, this vlog, a few years ago, I would have created a vlog, edited it to the best of my ability, put it up, and I would have hoped from that point that it was gonna get loads of views, likes, comments, shares, whatever. I would have invested nothing in the process whatsoever. It was all this mechanical forgetting. And then when the video went up, I judged my efforts purely based on the feedback that I got from that content, which, um, uh, which is another important point, I have no control over. Right? So for my mental health as well as productivity, I now put all of my energy into the process. By the, when I click live or go on this video and it goes up, I genuinely have no connection to it anymore. The only connection is with you guys and girls. If you comment, I'll comment back. If you like, I'll be like, cool. If you ask questions, I'll be like, amazing. There's another subject for me to expand on. Everything about this video doesn't matter because I've completed my process. And that's what I say to people with training. Go into that session with, this is the one. This is the one. If I put all of my energy and effort into this session, that's gonna be the one that's gonna change everything, right? Every single session, I show up just getting the work done. The hard stuff, I look at that as an even bigger win. You know, the sessions that are earlier, the sessions that are in bad conditions, I went, you know, over to Croyd Bay and I did a session the other day and it was pitch black and it was horrible and I really dragged myself through it. Got none of the expectation of the goal of a certain amount of distance, certain average pace, this, that and the other. I got none of those things. But what I got to reflect on was most people wouldn't have even gotten out of bed at quarter past four if they had a seven hour drive to get home. I not only got out of bed while I was on my last day of my holiday at 4.15 in the morning to go for a 4.30, two and a half hour run, I completed it, I kept moving, I moved the goalposts when they needed to be moved by going through the, t the village because I, I needed light before I could go into the hills, not quitting at the four or five places that I felt like I wanted to. It's, it's that mentality when you get more and more 
what's the word, evidence. When you do those hard sessions and you get to the end of them, you get four or five things that you can reference that you can say, wow, I got through that. So when a really hard session comes up and I'm at really low energy or anything like that, I'm like, not only am I gonna get the session done today, but I'm gonna get it done because, and because of this, and with that in the way. All these different barriers. They're, that's where my little motivation comes from. So I'm like, come on then, let's have it. So my advice, try not to focus all your energy and expectation on what you want from the bigger picture. Have that just to refer to every now and again to make sure that you're still on the right track. But put all of your energy into that next session and look at all the minor, tiny little wins that you can get out of it. Honestly, it will change your perspective of training and life as a whole, if you ask me. People, that is all I've got time for in terms of the questions today. I'm gonna say thank you so much to everybody who did send them. I now have to dump all of this content onto that laptop, get it edited as quick as I possibly can because the next two days, me and JC are gonna be on the road. We're going up to Wolverson's new HQ, which is very exciting. We've got some really cool stuff that we're gonna be filming with them. And then the very next day, we're going over to Nike HQ GM in London. It's a phenomenal space. We love training there. Loads of stuff to film. We've got two, well, I've mentioned one. We've got another new full-time sponsor that we have just signed to. I am not going to say who it is right now, but this brand, me and JC have used on and off since we were probably 16 years old. To say we're very excited to be working with them formally for the next year, buzz in. Let me know who you think it might well be in the, in the comments below. But anyway, I'm gonna leave you on that bombshell. Thanks so much for watching as always. Share it, comment, do whatever you can to push this video as far as possible. And if there's any content that you wanna see specifically, as I say, let me know below. Have a great day, evening, good night, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.